some of these TikTok conspiracy theories you're going to believe are absolutely true. Others you're going to think, man, this is a bunch of BS. Let's watch. The Simpson once again prophesied some crazy things. The Simpsons have made some alarming predictions about the year 2024. In a 1998 episode called Bart to the Future, the show hinted at an economic crisis, nuclear war, and the death of the U.S. president all occurring in the same year. The episode shows Lisa Simpson as the future president. In a scene with her advisors, Lisa mentions the budget problems and mess left by the previous administration led by President Biden. A news report in the episode then describes a nuclear conflict with an unspecified country, resulting in massive destruction. The idea of nuclear war and economic turmoil is understandably frightening. However, one can hope these predictions do not come true. Still, the Simpsons have predicted major real-world events accurately in the past. This leads to wondering what else they may have foreseen. In fact, a more recent Simpsons episode contains an even more terrifying prediction than anything before. Really? Do you want to find out about this new prediction in part two? No, I want to find out about it right now. You could have made the video longer than a minute. Gosh! But truth be told, the Simpsons have made a bunch of predictions that all came true. Who's to say that this one won't as well? This theory will make you see the entire world differently. We need to talk about this. Okay, so what if I told you that everything on Earth is now a miniature size of what it used to be? What I mean by that is that humans, animals, plants used to be all thousands of times larger than they are today. Now, this entire theory started when people started comparing tree trunks to mountains. This is a tree stump, this is a mountain. This is another tree stump, and this is a mountain. And this is a tree stump, and that is a mountain. Don't they literally look like replicas of each other? Well, the theory is that mountains are trees tree trunks and let me explain. So like I said before, the earth used to be a thousand times larger, which means that trees used to be massive. But the theory says that hundreds of thousands of years ago, there was a natural disaster that wiped out everything, meaning it wiped out all of the giant animals, humans, and all of the forests, which is why mountains aren't usually by themselves. They're all in clusters because they're giant forest tree stumps. Now you probably think this is crazy, but there's literally proof under our eyes. There aren't huge animals. What are dinosaurs? And pyramids are literally giant homes for giant humans. Folks want there to be giants so bad. I ain't seen a giant skeleton head yet. I'm just saying, look. Y'all can believe in the existence of giants and whatnot, but heck, until I see a giant skeleton head this big, leave me out of it. I think you're not even close to imagining the craziness we're in right now. I'm sure you've already heard about all the theories that say stars like LeBron James, Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, Doja Cat, Rihanna, and many others sold their souls to the devil and sacrificed their family members to achieve tremendous success. At first, I had no idea what that meant, so I did some research on the internet and quickly discovered some really weird stuff. And I really don't think you're ready to hear what I'm about to tell you. After watching this video, you won't listen to music the same way anymore. So let's go back to the source to fully understand the story. It was a little over a century ago, precisely in 1885. That year, the Music Commission of the Italian government declared that all instruments and orchestras should use a vibrating tuning fork at a frequency of 440 Haas. Now you must be thinking, what does this have to do with the video? Right. The problem with the 440 Hz frequency is that it is different from the original standard of 432 A's, which was used... Again, what does this have to do with the video? You... <sighs> you didn't explain what this sound frequency has anything to do with the video. We're going to keep listening. I need that explanation in 0 0.2 seconds. Let's go. By most countries around the world, this 432 HS frequency is considered sacred. For example, it is the frequency at which water or even nature in general vibrates. It is believed to be so incredible that it has benefits for the human body. It is said to help create a sense of peace and aid in concentration. All right, all of that sounds great and dandy and all, all nice and positive and feel good and everything, but what does this have anything to do with the satanic rituals and whatnot of celebrities and them sacrificing their family? I, I'm confused. How do we get here in such a short amount of time? These TikTok videos be like a minute long. What's happening? It's the kind of music typically used in meditation, but then what would be the point of changing this incredibly beneficial 432 H music to 440 has? Okay, maybe we get some. That's what I explained in part two on my account. So subscribe to not miss it. I
I honestly wasn't expecting that. This is not the same creator as the one before that was capping us with the part twos. I was, I really thought this was about to go somewhere. We're going to play his next video. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, just like we did the last one. This next video better be part two to whatever this story was. The Earth might be bigger than we thought. For years, people have debated over the shape of the Earth, if it is round or flat. Now, this might just all be a conspiracy. But what if the Earth had... Is it really, though? Is it really a conspiracy? Or is it a made-up conspiracy that's not actually a conspiracy? Just the freaking story. More than just seven continents. This might just all be a conspiracy. But what if the Earth had more than just seven continents? In Antarctica was just a giant ice wall that kept us from seeing the rest of the continents. What if once you made it past the ice wall, you'll find the 20 continents that are really being hidden from us? And what if there was a map that showed this? There are theories that these continents contain prehistoric animals, aliens, and advanced civilizations, and that the seven continents that we are living in is actually a giant farm or business owned by a small handful of families that make up the filthy rich in the real world or in the other continents that we don't know about. Now, I could actually see that being a theory. That would actually be a really dope theory, especially if it was true. We got a whole ice wall created by Antarctica, and on the other side of that wall is all these other continents that are living quite different than we are. And we are completely disconnected from them. But to say that would also mean to say that the Earth is a lot bigger than it actually is. What if the men in black are real? People have claimed seeing these weird individuals after seeing a UFO. They often intimidate and terrify individuals into being silent about their UFO sightings or research. They act as members of a secret organization. Sometimes they even show a white card with a logo and the word security written on it. It is said they are government agents, but some believe they are not even humans. Shane Sovar. A hotel manager and a security guard spotted a big triangular UFO over the hotel on October 14th, 2008. According to three witnesses, two tall guys in black visited the hotel a few weeks later. They were looking for Shane. Wait a minute, was that Cristiano Ronaldo supposed to be a men in black? You saw before they had LeBron James and Steph Curry. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Hotel a few weeks later. They were looking for Shane Sovar and the hotel security guard, okay. but they weren't there. When Shane Sovar reviewed the hotel footage, he saw two men with no eyebrows, no eyelashes, very pale skin, and similar faces. Is this just an internet hoax or? Men in black. Chair moving. This looks. Cover being pulled off somebody. This looks more paranormal like some ghost mess then oh sh oh 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 yo do a brother like this man why the hell do it like that man oh the cap is real what's with these conspiracy theories on tiktok they get fake about a day oh heck no that's messed up i about want to stop this video right here after that bs and dizzy for a second hold on Takes my medication. Oh, I, I, I go, you know, we'll go on to the next one. I swear, folks. Okay. This picture famously surfaced from 1941 because something looks very off about it. This guy, a lot of people cite this picture as proof of time travel because not only does he seemingly look very modern and out of place, but he also appears to be holding a camera that's very small, too small for any commercial grade camera of 1941. I've seen this, vi this video, this picture circulating across the internet for over a decade now and yeah he does look out of place he almost do he almost looked like he was added in in like photoshop or something
But let me explain why this is debunked. The modern t-shirt he's wearing, it's a logo for the Montreal Maroons, which was a hockey team from the 40s. The glasses were also available. They had protective side shields in the 40s too. But what about that camera? It's small enough to be a digital camera, but they did not have commercial grade cameras that were this small in the 40s. Incorrect. Kodak confirmed of a rare model of a small portable camera that was limited, but it was available by 1941, which makes this photo completely plausible. Oh, wow. Okay. So this that means this photo could actually be a real photo. Photo. But if we're going back to the whole thing that he said about them glasses, and I'm pretty sure a few of y'all thought the same thing that I was thinking when we saw that, eh, they don't look nothing alike. These glasses, these shades, what they almost look like, look way more modernized than what we're seeing here. You know, he's supposed to be showing, oh yeah, glasses back then also had the little shade or sunlight reflectors on the side of them, but... Yeah, these glasses look ancient. They look outdated. These look modern. These look like these. They look like these. They look like actual shades, but has the little sun visor thing on the side. Like they got this plastic. It looks like they're made of plastic as well. These are some little cheapo shades. I got ooh, with the orange. You know, I like it. You know, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep rocking them. What's up, y'all? So we're back with some more creepy celebrity conspiracy theories, and these two obviously involve Post Malone and the Kardashian girls and curses. So let's get into it. All right, so the first curse we're going to talk about is the Kardashian curse. So back in the 1800s, the Kardashians had an ancestor named Kikil. She looked like a Kardashian, ain't gonna lie. And she was a 19-year-old mother who was abused as a child, so she ended up running away because a bunch of bad shit was happening to her in her life up until this point. So like I said, she runs away and she allegedly seeks refuge in this village named Shikahol. <laughs> Y'all, I swear that's what baby that village is, okay? That village in Armenia is known for like witches, right? So Kikil ends up connecting with four of the witches in that village and she tells them that she doesn't want any of her future generations to go through what she went through as a child. So she wants them to have beauty, fame, and fortune. And the witches granted that, but allegedly the catch was that they would never find true love and they would always have bad luck when it comes to relationships. And any man who they dealt with would end up going downhill after they were done with him. Because to give to them, it has to be taken from somewhere, allegedly. Fast forward to now, the Kardashian curse is allegedly still going strong. She allegedly, if this is indeed a curse, is most certainly going strong. This, when it comes to celebrities, this is one of the best theories that i've ever heard all right this is my new favorite celebrity theory i gotta share this theory with people from how things have turned out for a lot of the guys they've been in right all of these guys all of these guys were negatively affected by the kardashian curse relationships with all right so the post malone curse conspiracy theory isn't really a conspiracy theory because he confirmed it so he was on the show Ghost Hunters with his friend Zach, and they spent the night in Zach's museum in Vegas, which is like a supernatural type museum, kind of like the Conjuring people have in their house. Hey, hold on. What? I ain't know about this. Y'all know I'm a fan of the paranormal, or we are at least on this channel. So anyway, Zach touched a divot box, which was like a box that contained like evil spirits or whatever. While he was touching the box, Post Malone touched his shoulder. So as soon as he touched the box, they both seen like this black figure show up in the room and they ran out. See, see. Whoa, whoa. So then after that, Post Malone had a series of unfortunate events happen to him. So he was in the shower and he seen random bite marks on his arm. Woo. Then while he was on his private jet, two of the wheels blew out. Following that, he ended up getting into a car accident and one of his homes got broken into. It's, it's, it's weird because after we opened up this creepy, creepy Dybbuk box, I got in a car accident. I got in like almost had a plane wreck. My house got broken into, all that type of stuff. But it was just within a month's time. It was really, really odd stuff. What? I knew nothing of none of this. That's crazy. See, that just goes to show you got to leave them dang on spirits alone, man. They don't be asking to be bothered. Let's keep the celebrity conspiracy theory train rolling. I'm liking this. I don't care what y'all say, Kevin Gates is not human. But a drive fast is when you don't eat or drink. How long you drive fast? I done did, the longest I done never did drive fast was like... Two, three days? Close to a month. What? About three weeks. No. <laughs> okay, no food, no. no water. You no food, no water for about three weeks to a month. 
I ain't gonna survive two days. Did not start no car battery with your bare hands. If I did, may God murder my children. You did not start no car battery with your bare hands. If I did, may God murder my children. I don't even. I hate that I what? even spoke about that. If I did, may God murder my children. Who says that? He says, I started a car battery with my hand. Academics is like, you did not start a car battery with your hand. I got water in my beard, y'all. Academics is like, you ain't starting a car battery with your hand. He's like, if I didn't, may God murder my children. That's not normal. He ain't normal to say some mess like that. Oh, my God. I'm already like 3,000 years old right now. I just tell people I'm 33 because I don't age. Okay. Hmm. Mother had sex with an angel, was born in a mortal, and ain't even know it. <coughs> Did this man just really admit to not being human? I asked to come to this dimension. I asked so that I could be elevated and ranked. Bruh. The hmm. angels, the Almatica. Why you don't know just. Now, that, that, that right there, that's a little different. That's a little different. There are some who believe that all of us ask to be kind of born into the situations that we're born into at least if they're favorable ones right like if you're if you're someone like me who believes in reincarnation you have lived the previous lives before and then you are granted another life and you got to choose the life that you that you wanted to have the experience that you wanted to have even though it could have seemed to be unfavorable in the beginning but you had to go through those trials and tribulations in order to elevate to the, the next level and the next phase of your your existence your your spirit you know i believe that i believe that call me crazy if you want conspiracy talk for yourself why you always talk through your familiar you know you probably uh, hold on bro just asked her why she talks through her familiar do you guys know what a familiar is no you know you supposed uh, to give you supposed to give them the arts they don't supposed to give you the arts you the controller I got 10,000 angels in here with me right now at my command. I'm up and rank here. <laughs> I'm up and rank. Dude seems to be on a higher level, making a lot of claims of which I'm not saying I don't believe. But honestly, that's why. Think about that though for a second. What if he was indeed operating at a higher level, one that a lot of us could not possibly understand or fathom? I'll tell you one thing. If he believes it, I won't knock it. Because who am I to knock what somebody else believes? Unless it's very clear that they're crazy and they sound crazy. I'm not saying that he does because some of that stuff he was saying make a lot of sense to me. I'm a little crazy, so, you know. Next. What's the craziest conspiracy theory that you believe in? Uh, my conspiracy that I believe in is I think the world's flat. Nobody can tell me otherwise. And I'm going to say true to my word. Speaking of um, what people believe, y'all comment down below. What's the craziest conspiracy theory that you believe in? Tupac is still alive. I don't believe that John F. Kennedy was shot the way they say he was. I'm not a believer in the, you know, magic bullet. It went this way, this way, all of that stuff. Magic bullet. Um, as a matter of fact, in high school, I had history class, and we had to make theme parks that were history themed. And one of my rides was called the magic bullet, and you sit down in a bullet and go crazy. But I got in trouble, and they didn't like that. So. That's messed up. Why they come after her for her little high school experiment thing and... and and there's a whole company that made these little personal blenders called the Magic Bullet. That ain't right. That ain't even right. Yeah. I believe in that there is a world underneath the Earth's surface. So, like, multiple worlds, like, layers of civilization that we don't know about. I like his theory about the multiple Earths or the multiple worlds within our planet. I can dive a little bit deeper into my thoughts around that theory, but I'll save y'all the trouble. Um, y'all can come up with your own conclusions and share them with me. Or share them with us down in the comment section below. Okay, so now it's your turn. What's a conspiracy theory you 100% believe in? It's not a conspiracy theory. It's more like a coincidence. Okay. But it's the Abraham Lincoln assassination and JFK assassination. Okay. So many things happened that are the exact same. And it's unexplainable. Okay. Lincoln and Kennedy both have seven letters. They were both elected in Congress in... 46 and both presidents in 60. They both lost their son whilst living in the White House. They both lost a child prior to presidency. They were both shot in the presence of their wife. Assassins John Wicks Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald were born in the 39 and known 
by three names, composed of 15 letters. Booth ran from the Ford Theatre and was caught in the warehouse. Oswald ran from a warehouse and was caught in a theatre. Both of the assassins were southerners. Both presidents were shot in the head on a Friday. Lincoln was shot at Ford's theatre and Kennedy was shot in a Ford car by the Lincoln limousine. Lincoln had a secretary named Kennedy who told him not to go to Ford's theatre and Kennedy had a secretary with the second name Lincoln who told him not to go to Dallas. Both assassins were assassinated before they were put on trial. They're 100 years apart. There's far too much information for that to just be a coincidence. Yeah, that is crazy. I'd never even heard of that one at all. It's weird. There should not be that many things in common with the, with two murders. Yo, is that true that both Lincoln and Kennedy's stories were that similar? But like the opposite at the same time? Wait a minute. That, that, that cannot possibly be a coincidence. There's no way. If that is true that all those things lined up that way, there's no way that's a coincidence. Something greater has to have happened in order for that to unfold that way. That's a great theory. Have you ever seen the footage or the assassination of John F. Kennedy? This is known as the magic bullet theory. Was the first- Wait, hold on. What's the magic bullet? I never heard of this magic bullet theory or the magic bullet in regards to the assassination of John F. Kennedy. I guess I have to watch this so that I can learn. Call me slow, call me ignorant. First ever conspiracy theory, and today it just turns out that it was true. For you guys that don't know, the CIA literally developed the term conspiracy to specifically cover up this event. Now, if you somehow believe that JFK was killed by one man in one bullet, you are just incredibly misled and manipulated very easily. This is how it went down. The 35th president, JFK, was going down the streets of Dallas, Texas. Kennedy was directly shot at 12.30 p.m. in his motorcade past the Texas School Book Depository. Now, the shooter ended up being Lee Harvey Oswald, and he was sitting on the sixth floor and allegedly fired three different shots from that floor. Of course, ultimately ending JFK's life. Now, this video footage wasn't released until 1975 or 12 years after the shooting of JFK himself. And you can see right here, I can't play the next two seconds of this video for obvious reasons. You can find this on YouTube, but check out why he is struggling right here. For the first time, because he was shot in 60 years, for whatever reason, the former Secret Service agent finally decided to speak out about the event. Paul Landis. Now, of course, the presidential candidate, R.F. Kennedy, spoke about this on his Twitter today, being like, this is a huge advancement because the magic bullet theory is now dead. The government has been directly caught lying to our faces, and yet this isn't even being covered by our major news stations yet, even though this happened about 24 hours ago. I'm talking about Fox News, CNN, etc., and, and you'd wonder why. But essentially what happened is that the CIA classified that the investigations of the event resulted from one bullet, claiming a bullet went through his back, ricocheted through his ribs and came out JFK's throat, which was the second shot in the video that you can watch, and then shoots into the governor, the person in the top left seat, and actually, I think, ricochets through him like two or three times, resulting in seven different exits and entrances and wounds. <laughs> what? That's the magic bullet theory? That this one bullet caused all this destruction amongst two people and did all of this damage? When we know that he shot at least three shots out of that gun. I never ever, this is why this is news to me because I always believe that multiple shots cause the damage. I always believe that. You you see it in a video. You, you, you see multiple shots. Okay, weird. I found it, check this out. It is so stupid. The theory says that a three centimeter long, 1.2 inch copper jacket lead core bullet uh, fired from the sixth floor of the Texas school from the shooter. It ultimately went through, passed through President Kennedy's neck into Governor Canale's chest, went through his right wrist and embedded itself in Canale's left thigh. If so, this bullet traversed a back brace, 15 layers of clothing, seven layers of skin and approximately 15 inches of muscle tissue and pulverized four inches of Canali's rib and shattered his radius bone. And for 60 years, the government has just said that our president of the United States was assassinated by this lone actor, who of course was conveniently killed two days after he was shot by Jack Ruby when he was being transported. Wow. So there was no room for interrogation. 
Now, the CIA has given multiple reports on short histories of what happened in the mid-1960s to 1963. But what it really breaks down to is JFK and the CIA didn't agree on a lot of things at all. And JFK would not give the go-ahead on a lot of the things that the CIA was trying to do with taking down Fidel Castro from Cuba, which was ultimately during the Missile Cuban Crisis. And this resulted in the Bay of Pigs. And through like a heaps of evidence that shows that JFK did not want the Bay of Pigs invasion to actually ever happened. But after rejecting the CIA multiple times and even the chief of staff, President Kennedy did not want these operations to take an effect with the anti-communist Cuban project the US and the CIA were trying to pursue, which ultimately led to the CIA going behind Kennedy's back and almost causing World War III because all they gave a shit about was the military industrial complex and wanted for whatever reason to cause a massive war. Actually, there is no whatever reason. They wanted to make heaps of money off of this. But what matters today is that the very first conspiracy to ever exist was just debunked. It ended up being completely true. And again, if you haven't seen the assassination video, it's very clear that JFK is actually shot twice into this, once right now in the neck, and then probably shortly in just a second, gotta shut it off. But the United States and the CIA literally covered up the assassination of a US president. And while this is for whatever reason not breaking the internet right now, RFK, again, the presidential candidate, I really recommend you check him out. Also just shared an article today of the CIA pretty much front preparing color revolution in Indonesia. Now, if you're interested in seeing an in-depth video on this, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Like why would the government even attempt to cover up or try to cover up an assassination that clearly happened right in front of the people? Yeah, I didn't think word was gonna get out. Scariest conspiracy theories in the world that will seriously change your life. This shows all the conspiracy theories in the world from the most well-known to the darkest of the dark that will literally change your life. Most of you already know by now, but if you're new here, in this series we're going from the top to the bottom. Today, guys, this is a banger. You won't see life the same, you won't see kids the same, and you probably won't be able to sleep for a long time. So, let's go. This is rebirth theory. Probably the biggest theory out there is what happens when you die. One theory for it, believable, and will have you thinking for a long time. For a lot of people who have died and come back to life, you know, people describe the, the light at the end of the tunnel. So, this links into reincarnation theory as well, actually. What if that light at the end of the tunnel is actually the hospital light? Stay with me, stay with me, hit me out. It's actually you being born. What do babies do when they come out? They cry. They cry and they scream. So what if the reason you cry and you scream when you come out is because you remember everything that just happened. You remember just dying. You remember seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and now suddenly being alive again and you know exactly what happens after death, but you can't talk, you can't tell anyone, you're still a baby now. Then what if slowly as you grow up, the memories fade away and you forget everything? We may have all lived tons of lives. We may have been reborn hundreds and hundreds of times, but we won't remember ever, only for that faint few seconds when you're first born. Boom. Do we hit that follow button? It's gonna get even crazier. I've partially heard this theory before, but not in the sense that you're reincarnated immediately after you die from your previous life. So the reason you're crying is because you remember what just happened to you for a brief moment until you snap out of it. And now all recollection of all previous life or lives are gone. And now you're about to embark on this new journey. Huh? I'm a strong believer in reincarnation. And like I said, this is a theory that I'm somewhat familiar with, but the fact that it can happen so abruptly, so immediate, I haven't quite taken that thought into account yet. Interesting. You were born last Thursday. This shows all the conspiracy theories in the world from the most well-known to- Look, I might have been born on a Thursday, but it wasn't last Thursday. Yeah, to the bottom, let's go. This is weird. Just a quick warning, this is flipping weird and will creep you hell out. This theory is called Last Thursdayism. This theory suggests that the universe could have been created pretty recently like last week. But it was created with the physical appearance of it being billions and billions of years old. Mm -hmm. Anything that could counter the theory, like your memories, recordings, <laughs> past events, whatever it may be. All that just popped into existence to make the universe seem older than it actually is. With that said, there's no actual way to prove this, so all you can be sure about is the exact moment you're living in right now. A crazy theory, and I'm not sure what I think of it, but if you deep it, it's creepy. See you in the next one. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not buying this theory because I know for a fact that, you know, you see this right here? I was looking at this picture that a fan sent me of her, her husband, and her son. This picture wasn't given to me last Thursday or any time recently. This picture was given to me a few years back.
this isn't a memory that was created in my mind just because time did this magical thing where it just put these fake thoughts and memories in our head. No, this this is real. <laughs> this is real. This is a real image of a real family. Better than the stuff this AI can create nowadays. <laughs> real image of a real family that was sent to me. From support supporters, this right here. This note written to me by a fan wasn't given to me a few days ago or a week ago, but months ago, last year as a matter of fact. Whoever came up with this theory clearly didn't put a whole lot of thought and energy and effort into it. You know, maybe they put just about a week of thought into it. So, you know what? I'm going to come up with a theory that's no older than my, my brain can remember. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard about the Illuminati. We don't intend to spend a whole lot of time on the Illuminati. But just enough to familiarize yourself if you've never heard of the organization. I've heard of them. It was founded in 1776 in the south of Germany by a man named Adam Weishaupt. He formulated his plans in relation to the House of Rothschild in England, Germany, France, Italy. The Rothschild banking dynasty behind the governments of Europe hired Adam Weishaupt to formulate a plan for the world at that time to accomplish certain goals for those in power. That plan came to be known as the Illuminati plan. Now, you can find most of this material in any library, any encyclopedia, under the word Illuminati which comes from obviously the word illumine, to be enlightened, to be in the light. But there's a very important book that I like to bring to your attention called Fire in the Minds of Men. It's on the origins of the revolutionary faith. Fire in the Minds of Men, written, written by James Billington, is a profoundly important book in understanding the revolutionary and radical movements of the world today and how they got here and who finances them and what they're really all about i'd like to read to you a couple of paragraphs of importance i think in dealing with the occult origins of the organizational arrangements how the occult organizations throughout the world, secret societies, are organized. Hey, this, look, thank him. <laughs> I'm glad he's about to read us a few passages out of this book because as interested as I might seem in this book, I don't feel like reading it. I just got three books that came in the mail literally today. I got to read them first. Look, he, go ahead. Give me the information. In it, on page 87, he says, The story of the secret societies can never be fully reconstructed, and it has been badly neglected, even avoided, one suspects, because of the evidence that is available repeatedly leads us into territory equally uncongenial to modern historians in the East and the West. In what follows, I shall attempt to show that the modern revolutionary tradition as it came to be internationalized under Napoleon, the Restoration, grew out of occult Freemasonry, that the early organizational ideas originated more from Pythagorean mysticism than from practical experience, and that the real innovators were not so much the political activists as literary intellectuals, on whom German romantic thought in general and the Bavarian Illuminati in particular exerted great influence. Here he was talking about the organization of the Bavarian Illuminati. You can't discuss the, the Illuminati without understanding the Jesuit order of the Catholic Church. Because Adam Weishaupt himself, the founder of the Illuminati, was in fact a Jesuit priest. He was not just an ordinary Jesuit priest though. In Bavaria, he continued to support revolutionary radical thinking against the church and has given to the world 
what has come to be known as the revolutionary tradition. In May 1st, 1776 is when Adam Weishaupt founded this order, and that's why, of course, in Soviet Union and other communist countries, that May 1st is considered to be the important day to all communist uh, revolutionaries. Because Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati on May 1st, this you will find, as I said, in any encyclopedia. That's something that I never knew, the actual day and year that the Illuminati was founded. I got a bunch of conspiracist friends. I'm going to ask them if they know what day the Illuminati was discovered or founded. Huh. All right, y'all, for the last video here, I'm not going to play any audio because I know some copywritten audio on here. Um, but check this out. These inventions, you know, these prosthetic arms and stuff, as you can tell what by what the people are wearing in these videos, this is super old. But look how well these prosthetics work and perform. Even though I'm pretty sure these prosthetics have no electronic mechanism controlling them, they work as if they do. But yet today, it, it took so long before there were prosthetics that were made just as well. Look at this car here. This this that this is a smart car before smart cars were smart cars. This thing it's so convenient how she was able to lift it up and squeeze it into this small space between these other vehicles. Look at that. N now it's going to be hard for them to get in a car. That's still rude and disrespectful. <laughs> That's probably why this invention never took off because, or maybe it did back then. I don't know. <laughs> Look at this tiny car. That's a smart car, all right. That thing is itty bitty. I'll be scared to drive it. You can... I feel like you can kick that car over with, with a whole family inside. That's so small. Okay, what's happening here? They wrapping this thing around this tree. Is he about to climb this? Okay, this... Dang. Did this work that well? Now, what's this? Oh, dang. The engineering of this looks so nice. What is this? Oh, heck no. Nah. Tell me that's not an electric scooter. Yo, and that thing took off. Bro, that thing was nice. That thing was so fresh. Look at this. Look at this. They take a flight. We just now coming up with inventions like this that will allow us to have our own personal drones that we can actually stand on the fly. But this is this is old tech. They've had this way back when. Okay, knight in shining armor. Uh oh, with the bend and the flex. Oh snap! Look at the shoes. What? All that movement. Look at that. The back of the knee. Wow. That just goes to show you a lot of the tech that we view as being new and innovative today. Psh, people were on it back then. They might not have the capabilities that we do now to get this stuff all the way off the ground and into the hands of the masses. But back then, they were thinking about it. <laughs> Trust and believe, they were thinking about it. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions down below, and I'm gonna catch y'all in the next one. See ya.